you're fascinated by Toronto, and I am yep. too. Toronto is suddenly 26 and 23. I'm, I'm not sure how. I don't really understand what's going on with, at the center slash rim stopper position at all for yeah. this team, but it hasn't really mattered. Um, they have some trade chips. They have Dragic at 19.4. Um, the Boucher at, at uh, 7.0. So that adds up to 26. I think Siakam's off the table with how he's playing, right? You agree with that? Yeah, and all the latest intel, you know, Michael Grange had a report that basically they're quote-unquote core guys. So Siakam, Van Vliet, Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, all off the table. So yeah. we're really looking at, as you said, Dragic, some supplementary pieces, maybe like a Malachi Flynn here and there, or some picks. Uh, that's what they're playing with here. And I think there's there's room enough within that combination of stuff to get something, starting with, as as you mentioned up top, getting something of value for Goran Dragic, who, as far as I can tell, is just chilling down in Miami, having a great time. I don't understand that at all. And also, that this team is good. Like, why wouldn't he? I, I hate when guys do this. I didn't like what Iguodala did in Memphis either. So I think Sabonis is off the table for them because you just laid out their top four. I don't think they're touching. No. Quint Capella, I'm not sure when he get can get traded, but the way Okongwu is playing for Atlanta... I wonder if he's in play now for somebody. I know they just gave him an extension, but if I'm them with how Capella's played this year, I just wonder if he's in play. Who knows? Mm. Nurkic is definitely in play. Yeah. Miles Turner, who has an injured foot right now, but people think he'll be back after the All-Star break. He's in play. And then you move kind of to that Kelly Olynyk range, which I I think he's worth mentioning. I that's this is the kind of guy who in a playoff series would be out there in crunch time for Toronto, Kelly Olynyk. And you could get away with it because you're so good defensively in all these other spots. You can cut. I figure. I think you can hide him at least a little bit. But they're going to do something. I can't imagine they sit this out because I think this is another team weirdly has an identity, right? They're yeah. They're whatever it is. I kind of like watching it. It's weird. They they just have this interchangeability and these athletes and and kind of a swagger to them that's bizarre. I don't know how to put it in words, but I think we see the same thing. Well, I think there's a range of of centers there that we we gloss past a little bit, which is the Jonas Valanciunas. Mm, and, and, I had and was, him. Yeah. Oh, and uh, and no, Jakob, I forgot to mention him. I had him. Who was the other one? Jakob Pertl as well. If San Antonio is ready to make some changes, oddly enough, two former Raptors who could fit right back in with this team, give them the rim protection, rim protection they need, the defensive rebounding they need. Man, that's a team that needs rebounding help in such a big way. Uh, but that's the trade-off of playing so small. Playing Siakam at the five and Barnes at the four. They have these incredible ball skills, one to five. But they're trading some of that size. They're trading some of their ability to protect the rim, their ability to finish out possessions. Can they bridge that divide is the big question for the Raptors without giving up that identity, without giving up what makes them so weird and so fun and in some ways so effective against so many teams. Yeah, the thing with them, the league is so weird these days where, you know, I think it was... a easier a few years ago. Now you're going to have games where you kind of have to have a center, right? You're playing mm -hmm. Philly that Siakam at the five isn't working in that game. Yeah. You know, and I think there's like six, seven matchups now within the league, even in now that Davis is back for the Lakers where you go through and you're like, that's just not going to work against that team. Toronto against Cleveland would break my brain if that was a playoff <laughs> series. I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I don't know who the advantage would be for that. But yeah, I didn't know what to do with Valanciunas because there were reports the last week that New Orleans was actually a buyer, not a seller, which makes no oh, sense to me. We are in a situation with that team where the GM is in battle, to say the least, and might be looking at it like, well, what do I, why would I be a seller? I'm, I'm probably getting fired after the season anyway. So maybe I'll make a run and try to make some noise in the playing game. And maybe Zion comes back. Maybe there's some path to us being good. But yeah, Jonas is somebody you know, it just feels like he should be in the playoffs for somebody. And his contract's pretty reasonable, right? You can put put together a couple deals and try to get him. So who knows? So you think Toronto is a buyer or you think they just kind of chug along? I think they're a buyer. I think they have, they have enough options on the table that they could get into the mix on some of this stuff. But the trick with Toronto and in some ways the trick with Memphis, those teams have been so good at drafting. The value of a first round pick to them is probably greater than whatever it'll be to the team they trade it to. So I could understand if you're if you're Toronto, if you're Memphis, clutching onto those things, saying, "Look, we could get, you know, a Delano Banton with a second round pick, and that guy can be a rotation player for us. Why am I trading away a first that could be twenty to thirty? Right. 